Tonight, the return of Wes Anderson. Tonight, the return of What the Waters Left Behind. And tonight, the return of Rex Reel. Cinematic class is about to begin. Your professor is in. Greetings, salutations, another sundry affair. I am your cinematic professor and purveyor of truth. In movies, we have an awful lot to do tonight. So let's kick it off with a bang, shall we? If I say the words Donnie Yen, have I piqued your curiosity? This guy is just absolutely phenomenal. And he has a brand new movie out called Sakura. And the movie not only stars Donnie Yen, but he directs it as well. So this is really his baby. I, you know, I'm not sure if you guys are uh, familiar with the, uh, the Wuixia uh, form of movie making. It's, it's a style of, uh, of oriental filmmaking that deals specifically with items of fantasy and uh, heroic fighters who are able to channel their inner power, their chi, if you will, and with that do absolutely amazing things, almost superhuman things. And that's what this is, this is all about. I got a copy of this right here. There you go. That's the, that's the front of the, um, of the movie. And yes, that is Donnie Yen right there. Okay. And I'm going to give you a chance to have one of these. Now, how's that for starting the show off? with a bang. All you need to do is send me your name and a return address right here below. That's where to send it, and I'll fire one of these off into the U.S. mail right to you. You know, this is, uh, this is actually a really good movie. It's based on the novel Demigods and Semi-Devils. Uh, now, I don't know if you've ever read that, but it's high couture, if you will, <laughs> over in the Orient. And this movie is based on that novel. You can add it to your collection. Just send your name and return address here. I'll fire one off to you. Let's take a look at Donnie Yen. Always worth watching in Sakura. I'm not a hero. I'm just a strong man. Zhongchu 江湖上人人都說他十惡不赦 
唔归神嘅话，我就要你死喺呢度。今晚我就要同佢你个了断。All righty, there's your chance to win Donnie Yen's new movie. Let's get on to some reviews so you know where to spend your entertainment dollars. This next one is a rather nonsensical <laughs> cannibal film that features a dysfunctional and inbred family. Now, all the way back in 2017, uh, the movie What the Waters Left Behind came out, and it gained some momentum because... It was a horror film that came from Argentina. We don't see too many of those. So when this one gathered a rather small but powerful cult following, well, I guess the sequel was inevitable and it took this long uh, to get it out. Uh, it still concerns the destroyed town of Apusian. You'll remember this town was destroyed with floods and then when the waters receded, uh, strange things started uh, to happen. But this time, Instead of a group of documentary filmmakers going into the town and encountering the cannibal family, this time it's an alternative rock band, and they are being lured to their deaths by the family's granddaughter. Several of the stars from the first film come along and return in this adventure, but uh, thankfully, the way the plot unfolds, this appears to be the last in the series of films. It was written by Camilio Zafora. It was directed by Nicholas Onetti. This edition is just an excuse to show a few torture scenes, and if you're really intent on showing uh, torture scenes, you probably should consult with, or at least study arduously, Eli Roth. He does it the best. Lakeside village in the 1920s, renowned for its saltwater baths, Epicuan came to a sudden end in November 1985, when the town's lake overflowed and water residents and tourists were forced to evacuate. And just days later, their homes and buildings were covered by almost 10 meters of salt water. Now, 30 years on, the water has evaporated, and former residents can walk through the ruins of what was once their town. Okay, we're going into fantasy movies now, so uh, we have some names. <laughs> better, we'll put the specs on so that we say these all right. This movie was written and directed by Matt Drummond. You'll recall that, I guess it was about a year ago, we did a review of a movie he did called Dinosaur Island. Well, now he's entered into the family fair genre, and we have a movie called The Secret Kingdom. This is truly family entertainment. It centers around a little boy's challenge to find confidence and to accept reality. It stars Sam Everington Ham. He stars as Peter. And Aaliyah Brown, with an E on the end, as his sister. And also stars Allison Parkinson. Peter and Verity discover a secret world beneath their bedroom floor in which the world is inhabited by pangolas, 
No, not the kind associated with the Wuhan virus. These have their own kingdom, and their kingdom is being destroyed by the shroud. It's told in a, in a prophecy that only Peter can save the secret kingdom and stop the shroud. This has everything you need for good, solid family viewing. How long do we have to stay here? Come on, Peter. You all settled in? Sleep well. has delivered our king. Does this mean I get to be queen? You are to restore the clock of the city now. To defeat the child. <laughs> and reset time. Sorry, what did you say? Your Majesty. You will need a guardian. We can clap. Statistically speaking, flying is the safest form of transport. And you will need a navigator. I don't think this is the right way. Can you wait until now to tell me this? Uh... You can't hide from me forever. I control you. Proud minions are everywhere. Take cover! Hold tight! Who goes there? Your king! All you need is within you. Out of my face, wind in my hair. Ew. What are you talking about? You don't have any hair. So I'd like to introduce a new segment to the show now. I'm going to just mailbag type thing where I find out some of the people that have written me letters or emails or text messages. I think it's fun to share some of these instead of hoarding them all uh, to myself in my office. And this week, I got a message from Gary. Okay? Gary is from Bethel Park. Our home base. Good deal. Well, apparently, Gary is rather irate. He said, I saw you at the local farmer's market, and you didn't say hello. I'm going to say part of this is my bad, because even when I read Gary's whole name, I don't know who he is. <laughs> I'm not getting an image in my mind here. So, Gary, I've got to remind you that, uh, yep, you can see me on TV, so you know what I look like but I can't see you, so <laughs> I think you should kind of keep that in mind. Anyway, hello, and sorry I missed you at the farmer's market. We got a lot more to do on tonight's show when Outtakes with Rex Real continues right after this. Folks, I always tell you that if you're looking for a good time, you're guaranteed one at the House of Feruza Cigar Lounge. Well, I got to tell you that the House of Feruza Membership Social is coming up on Friday, June the 30th. It'll start at 7 o'clock. Now, the event will feature adult libations, some free cigars, and if you're already a member, this is a great opportunity to bring down family or friends, show them the kind of good time you've been having, and introduce them to what's going on at the Cigar Lounge. If you have never been there, this is a golden opportunity to stop by, meet Sam, meet the people that belong there, check out the facilities, and have yourself some fun fun as well. You know, again, this is going to be held on June the 30th. That's a Friday. It's going to start at 7 o'clock. And if you'd really like to see what all of the uh, mean and atmosphere and sample a little bit of the fare of what goes on there, all you need to do is swing by the social. And you know what you do? You're probably going to want to be a member real soon. Call 412 
298-5220 to find out about tickets. That's 412-298-5220. See you there. You know, I have to tell you that in my opinion, and that is an esteemed opinion, Wes Anderson is a hit or miss director. Now, his Royal Tenenbaums, The Fantastic Mr. Fox, and The Life Aquatic were absolutely horrendous films. However, The Grand Budapest Hotel, Moonrise Kingdom, and The French Dispatch were quite enjoyable. If you follow his timeline, you could see where he's getting better with age. Well, now Wes is offering Asteroid City. It offers a large ensemble cast, as is his penchant, a unique, almost cartoonish visual. It serves as a scathing rebuke on movie and theater people, and it celebrates the dysfunctional family, especially ones where the children outshine the parents. Unfortunately, this script contains way too many inside jokes that I think will leave a general audience a little bit in the lurch. And yes, the rumors are true. ScarJo does have a nude scene in this movie, but I can tell you it's not really ScarJo. It is a body double. And you will say, well, Professor, how do you know that? Well, I know that because several years ago, while on a junket, I just know, okay? After typical ludicrous situations, the film concludes with the theme, you can't wake up if you don't first fall asleep. Makes sense. Now, there are always people around who are looking for hidden messages and subliminal meanings in Wes Anderson's film. So for those who are of that type of celluloid conspiracy theory type, allow me to offer this to you. Perhaps sleep that Wes is referring to is the lethargy that the progressives and their media puppets have lulled the populace into. And it's essential to wake up and set the world right again before those aliens come. You're not here. We're not there. The car exploded. Come get the girls. I have to stay here with Woodrow. I'm not the chauffeur. I'm the grandfather. Where are you? Asteroid City, Farm Route 6, Mile 75. Last train. Junior stargazers and space cadets. Each year, we celebrate Asteroid Day, commemorating September 23rd, 3007 BC, when the arid plains meteorite made Earth impact. Toledo. That's Mitch Campbell. You're very good in the one about the tramp in the brothel Thank who you. gets amnesia and Thank becomes you. a pediatrician. You were very awesome. Actually, awkward. maybe my favorite character I've ever I don't know why nobody else liked it. Oh. What do those pulses indicate? What? Oh, the beeps and blips? We don't know. Some of our information about outer space may no longer be completely accurate. Anyway, there's still only nine planets in the solar system as far as we know, Billy. Except now there's an alien. What's happening now? I don't know. I don't like the way that guy looked at us. The alien. How did he, how did he look? Like we're doomed. Maybe we are. I've just informed the president. How long can they keep us in Asteroid City legally? The world will never be the same. That's an alien doing Jeffy Jacks. That's an alien in a top hat. What's out there? The meaning of life. Maybe there is one. Are you married? I'm a widower. But don't tell my kids. You're saying our mother died three weeks ago. Let's say she's in heaven, which doesn't exist for me, of course, but you're Episcopalian. In my loneliness, I learned to give complete and unquestioning faith to the people I love. I don't know if that includes you, but it included my daughter and your four children. Sometimes I think I feel more at home outside the Earth's atmosphere. Oh, wow. Me too. They're strange, aren't they? They're children. Compared to normal people. Yes, that's correct. It's true. Freight train, freight train, going so fast. Freight train, freight train. I do a nude scene. You want to see it? Huh? Did I say yes? You didn't say anything. 
I meant yes, my, my mouth didn't speak. For almost a year now, Rex Reel has been an exclusive to the online reviews. But many people are clamoring for his return to TV. So tonight is your night. Yes, it is time to peel back the veils of time, to head back to the early Cretaceous period for the nation's first and only prehistoric film critic. Here is Rex Real. Ah, it is good to have Rex back in the studio with us again. You know, bears are a big hit right now in Tinseltown. They actually began all the way back in 1980 with a movie called The Prophecy. Remember that one? Yeah. Then, of course, you had Ted, one and two, they came along. And most recently, you've had Cocaine Bear, which has been a big hit. And now we have a wraith bear in the movie The Wraith Within. Now, the movie begins in 1952 with a farmer who kills his wife and his daughter. We shift to modern times, and the family opts to hold a family reunion. And they're going to hold it in the farmhouse where the murders occurred. The townsfolks don't want them there, and it's not long before the family is fighting not only with the townsfolks, but amongst themselves as well. The movie stars Allison Hockstone, Shane Christopher, and Brian Hodges. It is written by Carlos Samundio, and it is directed by Aaron Stray. Now, the look of the wraith changes in this movie. Its best look is the one they save for the very end. Overall, this movie is rather slow and has some terrible, choppy editing, which we can blame on editor Alex Zabo. So how do you feel about being back home? What kind of fast they're been. Uh, I might hit somebody or somebody. My anxiety came back as soon as we got here. Are you going to the reunion, Annie? That's why we're all back. I wouldn't miss it for the world. We never liked it here. Strange, being back home. I was always anxious in junction. I just feel like we shouldn't be here. I think we brought the cutter back. Two fields in the daylight. Yeah, well, crazy things that happen in the daylight. Amy Cutter is coming home. 
You know, every decade or so, we get a really good film from the French, and On the Edge just fits that bill. You see, a young man jumps in front of a subway train. The man driving the train is his father, but the boy is trying to give his dad a message because his dad is not just the subway driver, he is also a relocated Spanish special ops cop. Now, he must circumvent the French authorities and seek out and then bring to justice those responsible for killing his son. Okay, I got to get you some names now, so time to put on the specs. The movie stars Antonio de la Torre, Marine Vach, and Olivier Gourmet. It is very well acted, and all of the action is very realistic. None of the Hobbs and Shaw type nonsense. Folks, I really enjoyed this one. I think you will too. de rester à bord de la cabine ne jamais descendre sur la voie. Que vous a-t-il donné Vous avez dessus sans faire d'histoire. Je viens de monter dans le métro. Le métro s'arrête en plein milieu du tunnel. Folks, that's all we're going to have time for in tonight's episode. I just want to give you a heads up that we have an awful lot of people who want to show up on the show tonight. And uh, next week in the studio, I'll be with Brian Saponis and Mark Cantu. They are people responsible for the new werewolf movie, Wolf Hollow. We're going to be talking with them exclusively. That looks to be a lot of fun. Damien Leone from The Terror Fire. Remember that? Yeah, we're trying to get him on the show, and we're also going to be talking with Damon Hillen from a new movie called The Flood with Casper Van Dien and Louis Mandalore. So big interviews coming up on the shows ahead, and of course, always reviews and Rex Reel. And now that you have learned what you have learned, here endeth your lesson.